I'm Michael Block. I'm a hypertension specialist from Reno, Nevada, um, and I'm a, one of the principal investigators for this clinical trial. I spend a good deal of my professional life uh, trying to get patients' blood pressure under control. There's over 70 million people in this country with high blood pressure, and we're only controlling about 50% of those people, despite a lot of great effort on the part of ourselves, on the part of our clinical team, on the part of our patients. The traditional way that we control blood pressure is through lifestyle changes, which are, are critically important. Eating better, exercising more, losing weight. And then we have a whole host of medications that we try to use in combination in order to get patients' blood pressure under control. And in general, those medicines are, are very well tolerated, they're very effective. And as I say, quite a number of patients, 50% or more of patients, we can get under control with that available strategy. There are certainly still tens of millions of people who have poorly controlled high blood pressure in this country. And because of that, we're really looking at different types of strategies that might prove to be effective in helping us to get more patients' blood pressure under control. So there's a lot of different strategies that are being investigated. Many of them have to do with the sympathetic nervous system, which many of us call the fight or flight system. And uh, that system we know is one of the systems that's important for regulating blood pressure, and specifically one of the systems that seems to keep blood pressure elevated despite our more traditional therapies, lifestyle modification and medications, particularly in people who have really hard to control blood pressure. So there's a number of different interventions that are being studied to look specifically at how can we block the sympathetic nervous system, not necessarily with medications, but with interventions, devices. And uh, this study is one such uh, investigational approach. We know that the arteries that run to the kidneys are surrounded by nerves, by sympathetic nerves. And the hypothesis is if we can interrupt those nerves, the signal telling the kidney to keep blood pressure high will be decreased and that we can considerably lower blood pressure by ablating those nerves. We've known that or we've thought that for quite some time. The real problem has been how do we get to those nerves? Remember they run along the artery. So the idea behind this intervention is that we take a catheter and put it up through the groin, up into the aorta, and then out into the renal arteries. It's a, a intervascular procedure similar to a, like a catheterization that many patients may have. Um, and we take on the end of that catheter, there's an, a, a balloon that sends ultrasound energy out to the tissues that surround the renal artery where those sympathetic nerves run. And so the idea is that if we can ablate those nerves, perhaps we may see significant blood pressure reductions. So that's the hypothesis. We of course need to prove that. In medicine, we can have great ideas, but we really need to do what's called clinical trials in order to make sure those ideas really work in practice. It's a really well-designed trial, and hopefully we'll be able to answer the question of how this fits in potentially to the management of patients with complicated high blood pressure. So this study is looking at one particular approach to uh, blocking the sympathetic nervous system. There's actually a whole host of, of research that's being done in this field, both with different uh, catheters that can ablate the renal arteries, um, but also with other approaches that uh, affect the sympathetic nervous system. And um, I think these approaches definitely hold a lot of promise. And if you look at them in aggregate, we're starting to see quite a bit of data being accumulated, and the data is far from definitive at this point, but we're really seeing a very strong safety signal, particularly with re uh, renal denervation, appears in the data we have available to be uh, safe, and we're just starting to see some results that are, are making us enthusiastic that, if nothing else, this research really needs to continue.